This week has been filled with happiness and hard work. And the first signs of the shifting seasons. These changes always make us reflect on our purpose here, living in harmony with nature's systems. And we've come to realize that we've found happiness in our purpose here on the farm, in the simple things like fixing a fence or planting a tree or growing food, in the changing seasons and the freezing water. We've found fulfillment in the smallest things like being needed by the animals. We wake up each morning knowing that we have a full day of caring for them and working on regenerating the land. And this purpose makes us feel so full and happy. To me, happiness isn't a state of being. You can have moments of joy, like making something of your hands, growing and eating your own food, or skipping down the hill and jumping in the water. <laughs> Aside from this, happiness means fulfillment, having purpose, and being needed. The animals teach us new lessons every day. The star from the duck is always making new friends. We are always inspired by her openness to friendship and connection to everyone from a tiny butterfly to us huge humans. Ducks bob their head to say I love you. The sheep are always having fun and make sure to jump and play as they run from one paddock to another. We always try to hold the positivity of a bouncy sheep in all of our day-to-day -day tasks. Every day, the ducks sneak into the veggie garden. They have realized that they love lettuce, so one of them is always sitting and chewing on our fresh greens. Today, we are mending the fence and stopping these little rascals from jumping through. We've already fixed this fence so many times, but they always seem to find another tiny hole to sneak through. So, even though it feels like we're getting nowhere, I love tasks like this, where I can just sit and think and slowly work my way through a problem. No matter how menial the job is, it still gives me so much purpose. And in this purpose, I find happiness. It's hard to get anything done when you have the cutest little distractions waddling all over you. Test one, unsuccessful. These little fluff balls know how to acrobat under wire like they're in a limbo competition. They don't know how to get back in though, so I guess it's slightly successful. Wim always knows how to distract me from fixing the fence. He knows that if he climbs on my head all day, then I'll never get the time to keep him out of the garden.
After tightening the wire, I think we've finally stopped them. At least for now. One of the many things that these ducks have taught us is that you can always work hard to find a way. The cauliflower is ready to be picked and we are so excited to cook it for dinner. The hard work of growing it with our own two hands means that it tastes so much better. It's the small things like this, nurturing it as it grows from a seed into this beautiful vegetable and then cooking it into the yummiest meal to share with each other. That brings so much meaning to our lives. This year, the goats didn't get in and eat all of our broccoli, which is also a small joy. The signs of spring are starting to appear. The frogs begin to cool and the red cedar trees are shooting bright red with new growth. They are one of Australia's only native deciduous trees and at this time of year their beautiful red leaves are spotted through the rainforests. We can see them dotting the gullies and ridges way off in the distance and their strong glow reminds us of this change. We have learnt to live so deeply in touch with the seasons. And because of this, each change brings us so much joy and reminds us of our purpose as part of this big and beautiful system. We always try to remember to bring joy into all aspects of our day. Moving the goats to a new paddock is way more fun if you skip and jump, and the goats always follow, excitedly wagging their tail and shaking their ears. The water is still very cool, but there is something about the shock of jumping into freezing water that makes you feel truly alive. It is such a celebration of life.
This is a special ritual that Julia tries to do each day. But I am much more happy sitting in the sun and watching her swim. In our new studio, I'm finally getting to do some sewing. I'm sewing a top from recycled scraps of fabric. Crafting is a way that I find purpose in my life. To be creative means that I can find satisfaction from within. Even if I fail and have to start again from the beginning, creating something with my hands makes me feel so accomplished.
We're so lucky to live on a farm where our grandparents planted so many trees and our parents tended them and planted even more. When we pick fruit from these trees, it makes us so conscious of the importance of not just working for the benefit of ourselves, but for the people who will come after us. <laughs> Today we're planting trees, which will nurture us and hopefully so many more people to come. Caring for the earth and the future gives us the truest sense of purpose. We're planting four avocados, two limes, one orange, two lemons, an olive and two figs. We were able to plant these trees because of the help of our patrons and we're so excited and grateful. We're inspired to continue caring for this food forest and fill it with so many more trees. As carers of this land, it is our duty to plant more trees and fruit for those who will come after us. In our journey of returning to the farm, we hope to plant many more trees so that those who come after us will be nourished by the trees that we plant and the meaning of our actions. In this journey, we have also learned the value of trees. The beauty, meaning and health that a 50 year old avocado tree has is so much more valuable than any money or possession. Julia is picking and drying Thai basil for a yummy tea. She is taking the bush out so we can plant asparagus and blueberries here. They won't bear any fruit for a few years, but it feels so good to have our hands in the soil, planting roots for the future. <laughs>
Our compost is ready and it's full of worms. Such beautiful soil. We're planting beans. We have organic heritage seeds and some special seeds from the best vine that our grandmother grows. With all the work this week, we always make time for just sitting down and relaxing. We join the sheep for a special moment of calm, in the shade of the custard apple tree. This gives us a chance to just sit and be still. I think we could all take lessons on how to be happy from sheep. They eat when they're hungry and they nap in the shade. They adventure to find the tastiest fallen fruit and they skip down the hill as they go. Most importantly, they act as a herd and all look out for each other. We're planting asparagus. 
It isn't edible for a few years, but once it's ready, it is able to be harvested every year. Already from fixing the fence and less little rascals in the garden, the greens and tomatoes have started to grow back. We're making a salad. We're making this yummy cauliflower bake from the cauliflower we picked earlier. It tastes so good with so many spices all over it. We have the full recipe on our Patreon. Yum, the perfect meal to enjoy by a fire. We find that sharing meals is the time of day to celebrate and enjoy, and love crafting these special feasts to share between the three of us. We have always planned to build this life in nature, but because we lost our dad, it all came sooner than we thought. Even though it has been a really difficult time, we are also really grateful. We're grateful that we didn't wait later to start this dream and that we have these special times with the three of us, Mum, Julia and me, where we have found so much purpose, meaning and happiness in this simple life. Thank you so much for watching. Your support means so much. And a special thanks to our patrons. The animals, fruit trees and us are all so grateful.